Welcome back everyone. Today we have part four of our mind control and brainwashing series. Today we're going to talk about the nice guy conditioning preset identity. Now a lot of people in recent years have been talking about this, but in the frame and context of dating and relationships, and though that is a big aspect of it, it is just one facet and it actually goes much deeper than that and encompasses all aspects of an individual's life. Now, recently, China has released this document saying that they are now going to cultivate masculinity because there is a masculinity crisis within the country and they call the phenomena fresh meat, that these soft boy idols are now being projected outward to all the young and impressionable minds of the country and that is causing them to accept these preset identities into themselves. So what they're doing is saying that they need to combat this. Now as much as I'm a critic of the CCP, I actually agree with this assessment. And funny enough that they have said that this actually is a result of a CIA partnership with a Japanese businessman in Japan in order to feminize Japan and then spread out that preset identity, that programming to all of East Asia and the surrounding regions in order to feminize and weaken the once martial cultures that made up the traditional markup of these places. Now this is obvious to me why the CIA would do that if Japan was once an imperial threat, an enemy to the United States. Clearly they would want to target them psychologically in order to weaken them and make sure that they do not re-emerge as a threat. I remember there was once a theory that Japan would re-emerge as a superpower in the 80s and 90s and clearly that has not been the case. So. China has assessed this and said, look, we're going to combat this. This is an actual problem. This is coming up from the Chinese government down. People are noticing this, okay? And there's phenomena associated with this, right? We've all seen the dropping testosterone rates of Western men, the virginity crisis, the sexless men crisis, men dropping out of society on a massive rate, women outperforming men in school. This is all a symptom of nice guy programming, simp programming. It's not the only cause of these things, but these preset identities are contributing to the problem. Clearly, other people see this, the Chinese point to the idols, and I'm gonna do the same, but in the Western context. So look at some of the idols that Millennials especially grew up with. Now, not it became more prevalent in the later half of the 2000s. 2008 to 2012, it was big, right? We had Michael Cera movies. We had the Seth Rogen movie. Okay, okay bye. Evan! Evan, hey. Hey, Becca. Hey, hey uh, Becca. thank hey. you for your pen. Oh, no problem. No, no, don't worry. No worries. You just keep it. It'll be yours. You won't have to borrow one again because you'll have that one. <laughs> I've had some people message me saying, oh, well, these are just tropes. These are just tropes. What are you so worried about tropes for? Well, where do you think tropes come from? They're being engineered and they're being disseminated to the public in order for us to accept these tropes into our own lives, right? What is imitating what? Are we imitating media or is the media imitating us? Okay? So, these tropes, these loser gets the girl, these stoner guys with the girl, you don't have to worry about improving yourself, building something, becoming accomplished, striving for excellence or anything like that. You can just, one day you'll just synchronicity bump into a supermodel and via your charm and your wit and your personality, she'll become enthralled with you and then will accept you as her soulmate. 
Now a lot of men, especially millennial men, are finding out that this isn't the case and are becoming increasingly frustrated. They don't understand the dynamics between men and women, are lost and confused in this realm, and then they are preyed upon by predatory dating coaches who give them their own twisted answer to the question. It's raining, but we're going to stick with it, okay? I, I hike an hour to get out here, so I'm not turning back. I got my scarf over the camera, it should be good. So, yeah. And I just want to say, like, I do not accept this projection of masculinity, this car caricature of masculinity that people are projecting at us when we try and talk about masculine issues that masculinity equals meatheadism or grug like behavior i think masculinity as an archetype has many different forms one form of it that jumps out to me would be somebody like aragorn right somebody who encompasses both mental skill and physical prowess and throughout their whole lives tries to cultivate that and balance those two realms together to create a whole balanced male and right now what we have is well people who are completely just hyper intellectual and then on the other hand we have people who are just hyper physical and these two people hate each other and there's no real dialogue between the two but really they're both polarized within the masculine sphere so the, these tropes are being projected at us the michael Sarahs, the seth rogans the spindly little weasel type guy who for whatever reason bumps into the girl she falls in love with him and then he gets them and now we think oh that's what's going to happen to me I don't really have to worry about what I'm able to do, what I'm able to strive for within my own life, what I bring to myself, to others, my, the way I hold myself, how honorable of an individual I am. It's just about, you know, accepting yourself for who you are. Don't improve. Don't go to the gym. Don't read books. Don't challenge your mind. Just accept yourself for who you are. Smoke a lot of pot like Seth Rogen and all those stoner movies, nice guy stoners, and the girl will find you. And this is not how it works. Maybe for some select few people who find their stoner twin flame, <laughs> but for the most part, this is not how it's working. Guys are figuring this out. And they're kind of angry that they were lied to, and rightly so problem with this is become reactionary and that kind of blinds them but obviously why wouldn't they they're angry they were lied to that's what happens to people when they were lied to but obviously this goes way deeper than just dating they want you to become accepting of yourself for who you are they don't want you to strive they want you to be placid complicit self aggrandizing why do you think right now the gyms are closed, but the pot stores are open, right? Just think about that, okay? I had to sneak into this forest last week because the trail was closed. I live in a remote village in northern Canada, okay? This is not... <laughs> There's a reason why they want us to engage in certain activities. Now... This accepting of the self, no matter what, is also a big new age idea, which I've gone into other videos, but it's just being nice, right? We have this, especially in Canada, we have this stereotype that we're nice. No, we're not nice. We're polite. We're honorable. There is a difference. We are not these squishy little individuals who are just nice to everybody. Okay, we took Vimy Ridge, we took Juno Beach. Read about what are the things that Canadians did in the wars, they were savages. <laughs> all right, we're not these nice guys, we're lumberjacks, all right? 
Now, like in China, there are these programs here that are making us squishy, that are making us soft, right? They got rid of compulsory military training. Look at the countries that have that. Finland. When I was in Finland, I was in a forest on an island, and I was just hiking. And behind me comes a military exercise of people marching. So I ended up like walking with them and, and chatting with them, and they were all 18-year-old conscripts, and they loved it. And as a people, they seemed hardier, they seemed tougher, they had a sense of identity. But, you know, here we're losing that sense of identity because we have to be nice, right? So, especially, yeah, Anglo countries, America, these countries are being bombarded with the nice guy archetype. We have, look at, look at some of the bands that, that were huge when we were growing up, like the Jonas Brothers, Justin Bieber, okay? This is a complete feminization. Now you could say maybe the Beatles back then were feminine, but I mean, it goes all the way back to there, but it just progressed more and more and more until we're, where we're at today, where like, I think K-pop is the thing now. And they're just hyper feminized, right? So, it's pretty clear what's going on for those with eyes to see. Now, we talked about what was happening, why it was happening. Another reason of how it's happening is estrogen in the water supply. They're putting estrogen in the water supply, okay? Now, maybe this is just a byproduct of civilization, we don't really know, but it's clear that estrogen is in tap water. So do not drink tap water, everyone. Do whatever you can to stay clear of tap water because it is harming you. And there's estrogenic food that they're pushing, right? Beyond meat. Oh, it's just phytoestrogens. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. It's just phytoestrogens. Your body doesn't absorb it. No. Just eat our genetically modified food. Okay? Don't eat meat. No, that's bad. Eat soy. Because soy is the chosen food for the coming new man. So, we have this. And then they kind of create these new archetypes, these new priests and identities that kind of take that need for a masculine identity, but kind of just take it into their own direction, right? Like the hipster. The hipster, they have the traditional masculine aesthetic, but that is missing all of the actual action of masculinity. And if you're a millennial, you know that we get a lot of a lot of hate from the Xers and the boomers for for being hipsters and being soy boys and whatnot, but this was heavily pushed on us from all facets of our life, right? School system, right? We we sit on uncomfortable chairs all day, staring at blackboards, learning useless information that has not helped us at all. Information that we could have easily learned quicker and more effectively in different types of settings. But obviously this setting was used to control us and is not a good it's not a good setup for young boys to be in, to be sitting and trying to learn how to spell uh, four-letter words all day. They need to be exercising, they need to be using their hands, they need to be thinking abstractly, not memorizing useless information like they want us to. And they push the nerd archetype on us, right? There's nothing wrong with nerds, by the way. I grew up with a lot of Gen X nerds, but the Gen X nerd was different, okay? Because 
my brother is Gen X, so I had a lot of Gen X older males around me, and they were into things like Star Wars, into Star Trek. They were big movie buffs. They were into PCs and whatnot. But they also retained this other side to them where they were very into sports. They were, they were massively into sports. They were massively into fitness. They were, they were into fishing and, and hiking and hunting and all these types of activities. And at the same time, they were into Star Wars, they were into nerdy things, they were into sci-fi, they were into things that are like that. So they were more balanced as a generation, I think, than we are. They had two sides of the masculine coin completed within themselves. And today, I think millennials are either one or the other, right? We're either super ultra nerds or they're super ultra sports jock type people. There isn't this kind of middle ground like how there used to be. And I think that's a bad thing, as I've said earlier in this video. But I, I find that interesting that, that as we kind of progress, that the gap is widening between these two subcultures. Right, and I think if you go even back farther, men were even more well-rounded, more balanced within themselves. But today we see that fading a lot. So the nice guy, the pushover, the be yourself type of person, right? This is not where we need to look to, okay? It's kind of like, the millennial self-esteem movement that really attacked us, right? You're all special. You're all winners. Like, it's even worse now. We kind of had the, the, the old winner. It, it was emerging. But the everyone's special, everyone, uh, everyone is a winner. We're all going to be superstars. We're all going to be models. This type of mentality being pushed on us, right? And like Fight Club said, we're not. We're not all gonna be winners. We're not all superstars. We're not all rock stars. We are what we make ourselves to be, right? And then there's this other part of this too, which is kind of, I've noticed within these type of alternative spheres is this deterministic black pill mentality where everything is just predetermined by your genetics which I think is just a psychological attack on us because everything is not predetermined by your genetics a lot of it is some of it is but will power is a huge and massive part of that and we're being told that we can't develop willpower, that we're just stuck as what we are. And I think that's a psyop. And maybe I'll uh, elaborate more on that later. It's a bit of a tangent from this video, but. So yeah, and, and now what we have, we have the simp phenomena, right? Simping, okay? Giving girls on the internet money because of their looks, okay? Our ancestors are not smiling on us right now. They're not. Imperial. They're not, okay? Our ancestors are not smiling on us right now. If you're giving women money on the internet, they're not happy with what you're doing in life. And where does this mentality come from that if you just give women on the internet money, somehow they're going to like you, okay? This is the nice guy preset. This is the nice guy preset being programmed into our brains, saying, hey, if I'm nice to this girl, she will like me, for me, for me. How do I be nice to her? Well, what's the, what's the nice thing to do? Oh, I'll give her money. I'll give her money. And 
it's just, I can't, like, this is a hard for me to grasp, okay? Because I can never, I just cannot fathom it. I've already talked about stripper culture in another video and how I can't fathom it either. Maybe I'm just, maybe I've just had the ability to have relationships, so I, I'm kind of losing that, that aspect of it because I've, I've had experience and I have a girlfriend and all that, so maybe I'm just lost in that, but it seems like just total conditioning, right? People, I mean, it's always happened, it's always happened, but the, the way it's happening now in the digital format is just beyond me because there's nothing, there, it's a one-way transaction. Before it used to be a true-way transaction, now it's just a one-way transaction, okay? And maybe they view it as a two-way transaction that they're getting attention and that's the transaction. But that's how programmed we've gotten with this nice guy stuff is that people are just giving thousands of dollars away for nothing. So the nice guy preset identity makes for a weaker, more controllable populace. If your male populace is less assertive, weaker physically, less capable, more inclined to go with the crowd, to listen to authority, then you're going to have a more subdued serfdom from which you can reap the benefits from in order to have a more controlled system. And, well, if you put yourselves in the shoes of some person who wants control over a society, why wouldn't you do that, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Or if you want to harm somebody else's society, like we see within the Chinese, Japanese, East Asian phenomenon that happened, right? If you want to do harm to another society, it's a key component into your psychological warfare. What did Sun Tzu say about warfare? One of the most important books ever written. The ultimate version of warfare is to defeat your enemy without fighting. If you don't even have to put boots on the ground, if you have already won before the war has started, that is the ultimate level of warfare. Subversive warfare. And that's what's happening to us today. It is subversive warfare. It's chemical, biological, social warfare on us to make us weak. And if we become conscious of it, we can take steps to avoid it. So how can we avoid it? Get rid of the estrogenized food supply that we consume and water supply. Just make sure, read the packets, eliminate it all. Fitness. We have to be fit. We have to be strong. We have to strive. Mental. We have to read good books, like the book I was just telling you about. Read The Art of War. It's very small. It'll be good for your mind. And strive for something, okay? Don't accept yourself for who you are. Don't. That is, that is a psychological program that has been pushed on you, okay? You have to strive for something. Even if you want to be king nerd within the nerd sphere, that's a great and challenging accomplishment to admit that will, get, that will reap you benefits. Look at some of these, I'm not saying to go into gaming, but just as an example, guys who are gamers, if they're at the top of their field, they're celebrities. It's wild, right? Any field that you pursue, if you become competent in and strive for, you can reap benefits doesn't matter what field it is. You can reap benefits from becoming competent in a field. So do that. Those are my four tips. I don't know where those came from. I didn't plan on giving you tips, but those are my tips, okay? I'm not going to write rules for life. Maybe I'll do a video on some of the problems I have with that fella. 
but yeah, we have to understand that we're being attacked psychologically and defend ourselves against it, okay? If you don't even know you're at war and you're being attacked, you're screwed. So the first step of the battle is understand that you were at war. And then we can make actions to form a defensive plan. And that is what we're doing here today. That's what my channel's about. It's about decoding, psychological programming. It's about inspiring books that I like to read. It's about finding those, those deep archetypes that make us human and make us great. And it's about getting back to nature as well. So we have to, we have to develop ourselves mentally and physically. And let's look back at ancient Greece for a second, okay? Only those who were citizens could partake in the gymnasium. Today, the gymnasiums are closed, right? So get yourself a home gym. Honestly, if you look at the long-term investment, if you get a rack and bench and Olympic weight, sure, up front the cost is a, looks kind of steep, but over the years, and if you look at gym membership prices today, it's going to pay off. Now, maybe you don't have the ability to have a rack at home, but you could get an easy curl bar. You could definitely get a set of dumbbells. You can, you can figure it out. You can figure it out because you're a human with agency. Now, obviously, this is more directed at men, but I think women could understand too from this, could take away from this too, because if they understand that there is a, a psychological attack on men and can kind of see it and, and maybe help the men in their own lives out and point it out to them, right? So they don't end up like Michael Sarah. And I know I pick on him a lot, but to me, he is just the, the archetype of what went wrong with the millennials, okay? And that movie, once again, where he has to fight the seven X's, I always forget the title because I just blocked it from my mind. Michael Cera vs. The World. That movie is the ultimate archetype of millennialism, okay? If you read that movie, you understand everything about how we have been programmed, how we've been attacked, and the male-female dynamics that they pushed on us, okay? So if you want to, maybe we'll do a an analysis. I don't want to really make that by myself. The crows are angry. I don't really want to just do that by myself. It'd be fun to get like a couple people to watch that movie and just kind of deconstruct it as like a, a watch party. You know, some more some more communal activities like that in the future I think it would be good if, if I keep getting some subscribers, but you know, I'm really happy with the rate of everything's going. I, I don't want it to be crazy. I don't want it to be a, a niche of open-minded, you know, awake people. That's just what I want. And what, what it is right now is perfect for me. So thanks for watching again. If you liked, give me a like. It really helps the channel. Always feel free to subscribe if you feel the need to. And I want to thank you again for watching. Be aware of the programming and see you next time.